hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rocky Sete. So, I did my bookshelf today because I'm going under the weather and I just don't know how to strength to arrange my uh, arrange a tripod in front of the bookshelf and I don't feel like sitting on a chair. So, yeah. How are you doing? How is your week going? It's the beginning of the week here and my week is going mm, so so and that's pretty much it. Although I feel kind of down, I actually want to tell you about a book I read that's really nice. And it's the a novel of a fellow Nigerian and she's also Canadian as well. And her name is Francesca Ekoyasi. Francesca Ekoyasi's book um butter honey butter honey peak bread is amazing i have to say it step slowly because i always miss it i always say peak honey butter bread so it's butter honey peak bread and this book was such a nice read because it really gave me the necessary disconnect i wanted i read i read this book on easter sunday and although i wanted to go out that because being it was Easter Sunday, so I just wanted to leave the house, but I didn't feel like leaving there. I just wanted to go out because it's Easter Sunday, but I didn't feel like leaving the house once I started reading that book. As I got the recommendation on Bookstagram, and I really appreciate it because it was really nice. I just it was it's a book that you just want to curl up and read, just keep going, just keep following the characters, just keep learning from the characters. And in my usual fashion, where I'd like to put myself in the shoes of the character, I didn't, I didn't need to do that. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that I really appreciate when authors do this. What by you just tell you, you sit and relax, and just learn from these characters. Just, it's not about you. It's just a learning moment for you. So just follow this people's journey. So they just take your hand and just really go with you. So I, I hope someone, I hope you understand what I'm saying because that's how i feel i feel and the last time i felt like that the book was um behold the dreamers by mbolo mboy so this was like it's not the same storyline but it's i'm just trying to tell you that the authors held my hand and walked me through the entire journey francesca's style of writing is really brilliant and the fact that she was not she did not shy with my nigerian is at all really made me laugh because I felt like okay, it's a really nice thing because a lot of African writers are beginning to just really embrace their Africanness or their Nigerianness in their writing. They don't have to explain it, they don't have to water it down, they don't have to fix their mistakes. So it's nice. So in this book, there's a large display of Nigerian words, Nigerian pidgin. The way Nigerians speak, like an example of this that was given in the book was before before. For Nigerians, before before means I knew you a long time ago. Or not now I knew you before so we, we like to repeat words to say before before <laughs> a lot of words we just really repeat them for just to show emphasis actually so there are a lot of words like that in the book and while I was reading them I was just laughing and I felt like the person that's not Nigerian is reading this now or non-African the person might have a hard time trying to um, really know the true underlying meaning of these words and I just thought to myself, I wish I could be there when everyone in the world is reading it and just be explaining some words to them. But this does not take away the fact that it's an awesome narrative and anybody can pick up this book and enjoy it. I'm just talking about how I just really want people to really understand the point where Nigerians are coming from when they use certain words. That's it. So what is the book about? What's the book about? I know like a lot of people are like, oh, let's to the point right now. Hold on. The book is about three women, a mother and her twin daughters. Cambri Nachi is the mother and Kainde and Tai are the daughters. So these three women, that's one thing I love about the book so much. It really highlights a lot of beautiful things, which is love, um, forgiveness. A lot of things, love is in it too. But one, two I really hold dear to me is forgiveness and loneliness. So Kaminachi, I'll start with Kaminachi because she started the book, her chapter started the book, and the book is written in the, an omniscient narrative technique. The only person's um, chapter that I noticed was written using first person narrative is Kaindi's chapter. Or the others were used the um, Frances, the others Francesca used 
the omission narrative technique to tell their stories. So it was more as if Kanye was present, telling those stories, telling her own story, her own side of the story. So Kamri Achi is an Ogbanji. If you are a lover of African literature or Nigerian books, you know this word, well, Ogbanji. Ogbanji literally means a child that comes and goes. So it's simply like, a, like an evil spirit or a spirit, depending on how you want to say it, see it, that, but so most families really brings a lot of pain to the family. So most people call it an evil spirit that plagues the family that the child just comes and goes. You give it, to, it's just like some sort of reincarnation and you keep on coming back to that same family. So while mother is mourning her child and still trying to get over the one that died, the one that got away, this same child comes back again. And I'm not just saying that they just appear. No, you have to go through the process of giving birth to them and all that. So sometimes some parents try to just keep, keep these children with them on earth because of course you love your child no matter what, no matter what their identity may be. You love their, your child, so just try to keep them close to you. And so um, a lot of these doctors will tell you, okay, dig up their bags from the ground so that you cannot, so they can go back to where your community spirit was. Or they'll say you have to give the child a mark. So Cameron actually was marked on her neck so that they will know that okay, this is a child that's come back again. So they don't just really keep their hopes up, or hopefully they'll know that oh, we know your tricks. So maybe the spirits will now shy away and just stay in the world. So that's what um it really is. And this is really a painful experience. I can't even begin to imagine how the parents of Ogmandi children feel. And and for Ogbanje children, death is the only part. Death is merely a passage. That's that's the belief. Death is merely a passage. So Kamina is an Ogbanje, and this her identity. Um, she, she believes that it, it affects people that she loves, and she really really wanted to stay on earth. She wanted to stay on this side. On this side, she wanted to go to the spirit realm. She was not with her father and her mother. Although her mother had to disconnect from her after the father's death, this really plays. Cabrina changed to loneliness as well. Then her husband died, and this converted her into just staying in her head. This had disconnect affected her daughters because something really terrible happened to one of the twins, and this was going to shape their lives in a very, very deep way. So for Taya, for Taya and Kainde, something bad happened to Kainde when they were little, when they were much younger and this caused a separation between the twins and this is something that is really rare because most of the time twins are always connected yes these twins are connected but there was something that was, put, that was pulling them apart and this really affected both of them so kindly Altai had to go to London first just to get away then she later moved to Canada later. then kindly as well went to Canada but Tai will keep on writing to Kainde, but she never ever send them to Kainde. She that was just her way of trying to keep tell her sister about what was happening to her, what was up in her life. I can imagine how Tai, what how both sisters were feeling because it's kind of sad that you're not connecting with your family members because these people are kind of like part of you, and the fact that you have to say, okay, I do not want to speak to this person until this person and I share the same blood. I don't want to speak to this person ever again. So it's really a very huge decision. And the, the book, Tai really struggled with, with it a lot. She really struggled because she was spread into a lot of things and she would normally cry out and it was really hard on Tai who, from, from my position, it was, really, it was harder on Tai than Kanye. Kanye just really had to shut out her sister. That was all she really needed to do. Although she would imagine her sister in places, her sister to just be herself imagining her in places. But still, that was what Kanye wanted. But Ty did not want that. Ty wanted to be with her sister, talk to her sister about things and tell her stories. That was just what Ty wanted. So, after the case of being apart, these three women are going to be under one roof again. A mother who, um, the children just said, okay, she, she has gone cuckoo. And two daughters who are not really speaking to each other very well. So they had to come under one roof and bury the hatchet. One key player in this book is Fu. 
So lovers of food are going to enjoy this book a lot because um, Francesca writes about the process of making meals in a, very, a way that it's almost romantic. She talks about the process so beautifully that you would, if you're a food lover, you keep you just it's it's really nice. And also for for people who love to travel, you would love this book as well. Then I think that if you if you enjoyed Freshwater, you would enjoy this book. If you read Freshwater by Kotake Nezi, you would definitely enjoy this um, Butter Honey Pig Bread. I had to write it down so I don't miss the words up. Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Ikoyasi. Loneliness and Forgiveness are a major theme in this book. And I think it's very important, especially in this, in this time, where even with the coronavirus pandemic and all sorts of things going on in the world, it's, it's easy to feel lonely, it's easy, it's easy to get angry and not easily forgive oneself or even others. So I think it's really important, these themes. There are other themes too that are actually equally important. Like we're talking about identity here, we're talking about love, we're talking about African culture and all that. So it, this book is really loaded. It's not just narrowed to just loneliness and forgiveness, but it's kind of a major theme for me. The three ladies battled with loneliness as well and forgiveness too. Because first, Kamina T was battling with her identity. So it kind of like just really singled her out in life. All through her life, she was just really wanting to belong, wanting to stay on the side, wanting to show her the people she loved that she loved them. And even though she was not the best mother, it was actually she was actually coming from a good place, a good place all the time. So this really she really battled a lot in the book, and even her own mother had to um, and even her own mother had to abandon her at the point because of these identity issues. Then we talk about Taye and Kindy as well. Taye, we really saw how lonely Taye was when she was in London. She started studying chemistry first, then she knew, then she discovered that she had more love for food, then she switched. Then also, Kindy as well battled with loneliness, battled with this traumatizing experience she had as a child, and battled with just really reconnecting with her sister. So, and if there's something that was at play in this book, each person had something they always felt to, to express themselves. And I think this is really important because if you're feeling lonely, you always need something, some sort of activity that you can fall to that you love. For example, Ty loved cooking. It was as if she was in love. She was, it was, like I said earlier, Francisco was writing the way that it was almost romantic, the way she described the food and everything. So food lovers are really, <laughs> I'm not a food lover myself, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not really a food lover, but I love happy meals, of course. But but those, you know what I mean. There are people who are food lovers, and I don't count myself as one. So seeing this author write about food, and I'm like, is this? Are we really talking about food here? Because the way she told the experiences was beautiful, and for Kindy and her mother Kambi, Kambi loved art. And kindly as well love art. So you can see that and also Tai also had a big fan too. You can see that it's important to have an activity that you can always escape to when you are feeling lonely or you're feeling alone. That's that that's just truth. I know that it's not it, it might it might sound crazy to a lot of people that someone can actually be lonely, especially in this time of where we have social media and you can actually just text a stranger in or Asia, but it's, loneliness is very real. I don't think I've really had such deep moments of loneliness in my life because I have a family that I talk to and all that, but whether fleetingly or otherwise, each one of us know what it means to feel lonely. When you move to, when you go to a new school, when you move to a new neighborhood, when you start your, your, your first day at work. So we have this tiny, specs of um, having an idea of what it means to be lonely this is this to show that this goes to show that every human being needs somebody you can't you can't be an island you need somebody to always fall to you need someone to always just hold your hand or talk to and someone that just really gets it so but if you do not have anyone to talk to just you should also try to be social even when you don't feel like it
that's another tip on backing up your needs. Try to connect with people, try to talk to people. Although this is something that's really hard for a lot of people, but you can actually start if you really want to start a conversation. I learned this when in 2021. Yeah, it's a serious. Before 2021, it's hard for me to actually start a conversation with anybody. But I decided to try for 2021, try to just start conversations. And it's pretty weird because people are weird sometimes, but some people are actually nice. But mm, I'm just learning, Shaw. Some days I don't want to, and it's fine. Some days you don't want to socialize, it's fine, but you should. it's good to make a conscious effort. So forgiveness was really an integral part of this book, and I loved every bit of it, every single bit of it. When the book ended, I just started trying to know, okay, what next for the sisters, and trying to just continue the journey. So the book was so beautiful in a way that I, didn't, I did not want it to end. It was just... A life that I was interested in. That okay, what happened to this person? I want to know more, more, more. How is who is this person going to fall in love with again? How is crying this baby going to be like? So I just really wanted more. That's how amazing the book is. Yes, it's once again it's a debut novel. Pretty talented. Please do not stop on this book. Please pick up this book and read. You can get an ebook version, you can get an audiobook version. I was going between audiobook, ebook, audiobook, ebook when reading this one. So you can get that. Or you can get a physical copy, which is actually amazing too. So just whatever you do, just get a copy and let me know what you think when you finish reading it. So what am I reading at the moment? Nothing. Because I feel down. I feel really down. So hopefully I get better. And I just think maybe I'll just pick up something and read something romantic actually. Yeah, because I'm, I'm in that mood. So, what are you reading? Let me know in the comment section and make sure you take good care of yourself. Goodbye.